The two emotions that most people would deny experiencing, let alone experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis, are those of envy and jealousy. Now, today I want to cover the envy aspect. Though most people confuse the two for one another, they are cousins but distant cousins, right? They are related but not necessarily as close as most of us would have them be. Now, jealousy is that experience or that emotional experience of when we desire somebody to not have what they have, right? We see somebody with something and we wish they didn't have what they had. Whereas envy is when you see something or somebody having something or experiencing something and you desire that thing for yourself. And the reason I say these two are related but not as closely is because envy can actually be a powerful tool for our own lives. As a matter of fact, envy can be a gateway into much more. So let's get into this envy conversation. Again, a majority of us would not even admit that on a day-to-day -day basis, we feel these emotions, right? We see things, uh, we, we see people having things and experiencing things that we truly desire for ourselves. And instead of admitting that we want those things as well, instead we feel resentment. Instead we feel ashamed. Instead we feel insecurity. And so we project that feeling as envy towards the other. And usually it comes out as talking about the person, right? You might see the person in the Lamborghini and start talking smack about him. Like for me, I used to see the people in the Lambos and the Bugattis and immediately I would have some sort of preconceived notion. I would have some sort of judgment for that person without even knowing them. Now, if I saw somebody in the Kia or the Acura or the Prius, I, well, I did have some type of judgment, but it wasn't the same type of judgment for that person, right? I thought to myself, wow, they must be a humble person, right? They must be so secure. Meanwhile, the person with the Lambo, oh, this one right here, this person's ego is bigger than the galaxy. This person right here doesn't know how to contain their ego, right? They must be this type of person, that type of person, simply based off of the vehicle that they chose to drive, which shows more about me than that person. But that's a story for another time. So again, most of us, if not all of us, at some point in time, if not regularly, feel this emotion of envy. And the moment we are able to accept it is when we are able to use it or at least to investigate it. Now, most of us have a fear of most negative emotions in the first case, right? We believe that a negative emotion means something is wrong with us, we're defective. When in reality, it is actually an indicator that something is going on, that there's something that needs our immediate attention. It's the very same as like a check engine light or you know, check your tires light or whatever you may have on the dashboard of your car. It's not that there's a problem with the light, it's actually indicating that, hey, there's something going on with the car. And so the emotion itself is not wrong or not bad. And so we have to start to accept these emotional experiences and use them for what they are trying to be used for. Use them in their purpose, in their rightful purpose, which is not to act upon them, right? You, you experience anger and you think to yourself, I need to go punch somebody in the neck. No, that's not what that's about. Anger is trying to show you that you feel some sort of repression or suppression. You feel you know, some sense of powerlessness and this is your greatest sense of relief, right? That's what it's trying to tell you. It's trying to indicate to you. And so again, when we get to this thing of envy, it's the very same thing. It's trying to get a message across to you. And that message is this, whatever I'm experiencing, whatever I'm seeing somebody else experience, right? Whatever it is I'm observing that is bringing about these emotions of envy is actually something I desire for myself, that's plain and simple. Every single time you have an experience of envy is because you want that thing that that person has. You want it for yourself. Again, not necessarily jealousy, though sometimes they could be coupled. You might be jealous of the person and envious. You might have jealousy towards them. I don't want them to have that and I want what they have, right? That one right there, that's going to be a sticky situation. We can, we can work through that. We can definitely work and heal through that, but it's a little more of a little messy situation, right? But when we're dealing with just envy, like you just feel that that dissonance or that yearning or that gap, that desire for that thing, that's not necessarily wrong. It's just we have to redirect that emotional experience. We have to redirect what those emotions are saying. Now, if you, let's say, have an experience where you are envying somebody's relationship, you may think to yourself, right? You may think, ah, I want that person's girl or I want that you know, person's guy. When in reality, what it is you actually want is what they have within their relationship dynamic. That's what you want. And again, when we have misdirected desires, 
which they come from a broken place or from an egotistical place, from a place of hatred, hatred or woundedness. When we have our desires coming from that state, then we just, we want exactly what they have. Oh, I want their car, right? I want their girl. I want their this. I want their that. When in truth, what is trying to be indicated to you is that you want that experience for yourself. You may see somebody with a family and think, oh, I want their family. No, you don't want their family. You want that experience. You want whatever it is they feel or you think they're experiencing in having that family. And so we really have to get ourselves to a place where we stop judging the emotion in order for us to investigate it. And once we can do that, then we can get honest with ourselves. Like for me, once I got to a place where I realized seeing the person in Lambo was actually an indicator for me that, man, I want those type of experiences. I want that type of abundance where, you know, the type of vehicle that I can get for myself is, is whatever I want. And so I accepted that. And now I can actually get this. Now I can actually build a life where I am bringing these things into my experience, right? I can attract something different. Because the truth is, if we hold on to those envious feelings, we will always have that disconnection. You can never truly have something that you feel a lack of or a deprivation of, right? And there's people who have the physical thing that still feel a deprivation. Like there's people who might have a billion dollars in a bank account, but feel a deprivation and therefore they will hoard it. And that's not most, right? Contrary to popular belief, that's not most billionaires. That's just some individuals who have that type of, you know, hoarded mentality, which will actually stop the flow from coming in. And so again, envy we really want to see for what it is. It's telling a story. It's telling a story to us about us. Hey, this is something that you desire. Now let's investigate it. And at that point of investigation, you can ask yourself, right? Because I stopped judging myself on all fronts. So I stopped judging also the desire for that Lambo, which I used to do, you know, in my prior years. You know, my, I would call it another lifetime ago. That was a different person. I'll say not only is the envy bad, but uh, I'm bad for even wanting the Lamborghini and I should just be happy with what I have, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas now I'm like, you know what? I do want that thing. Like I want to experience that thing for myself. I don't want the one they have. I want the one that I have. I want the one that I'm going to get. I want, you know, the one within my preferences. I want what is for me. Now, is it okay to want that? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, it is actually the most natural part of being human to desire more. It's what makes us, you know, go after things and create things and, and aspire. The desires really push us into action, right? It's a, it's a God-given aspect of us, right? This is a natural inclination. The reason why it oftentimes gets misconstrued is when we start getting into this mentality of, I, I want that thing that that person has and I can't have anything else, right? I see some people get caught up in that. I want that person's man. I want that person's woman and nothing else will satisfy. I want the house that they have and nothing else will satisfy. And once you're in that state, then you start to lose yourself. Well, you've already truly never been in self, right? It's the ego that's saying that because it needs to be gratified. It's the fear state within you, right? It's that anxiety. It's, it's a feeling of deprivation. It's a feeling of, of not enoughness, inadequacy that's speaking when it is desiring something that is somebody else's. So when we are overcoming this thing or overcoming the, the envious emotional state over somebody else's success, all it shows us is that we desire that level of success for ourselves. And what do we do about that? Well, again, we get honest, number one. So you, you become aware, you become honest about that awareness, you accept it, and then you can decide what you want to do. So I said to myself, is it really what I want? Like right here, right now at this moment in time, is that really what I want more than anything else? And I said, well, yes, but also mm, not really at this very moment. Like what matters most to me is, you know, building out my purpose, like what I'm doing right now which is literally getting to speak to you guys, getting to build out, you know, write these books and build out these courses, etc. That's the thing that I truly desire more than anything else at this moment in time in my life, right? So that being said, then I put my efforts and focus towards that, right? And then I allow that to be the actual gateway where the Lambo comes from. Because if I'm looking for the Lambo to make me happy, that's not necessarily going to be the answer. If what I'm seeking is fulfillment, then I should find the fulfillment first and then get the thing. And that's talking about universal principle, universal law, right? Law of attraction, et cetera. Like once you start understanding how energy and frequencies work, you start understanding that you can only have what you have already, 
So everything I have in this current moment is what I believe myself to have or I believe I'm worthy to have. And so when I continue to work on that aspect of myself, then those things come into my experience, right? Ironically, when you let some of these things go, then they come to you. So that desire, that strong will coupled with the desire does not necessarily mean it's going to be, you know, the right equation for you to get those things. You can, sure, scratch, claw, and fight and do all those uh, other things to get whatever it is you desire. And maybe that gratifies your ego, but it's not going to gratify you long term. You'll get the thing and then now you need something else because you needed it to fulfill you. So that's where I started coming to with all my desires. When I envy something, I say to myself, why do I want this? Do I truly want this for myself? You know, seeing my coach Bobby, uh, my, my uncle Bobby, shout out to coach Bobby Bluford, you know, buff is all get out 50 years old, with all the muscles in the world. And I said, man, I really, that's something that I want. I said, I was honest. I said, that's actually something that I really want. And then when I said, well, do you want it because you want to look a certain way? You want to be perceived? And first it was, yes, absolutely. That's exactly why I want it. But once it became a me thing, once it became, I want to see how far I can really take myself. I mean, I'm in the gym anyway. Might as well see where I can really go with this. I want to see my potential. I want, once it became about fulfillment, true lasting fulfillment in my life and, and this evolution of self, once it became about that, it was a wrap. It was easy for me. I'm going after this thing, right? And it becomes honestly an easier process because my why has changed within that. But that's a whole nother thing for a whole nother time. Now, before I skedaddle and dip on y'all, shameless plug. My first published book, Doing Me Guilt-Free, is officially on the market. Make sure to get yourself a copy of one of these. You're going to get yourself a smaller copy, like the one that's coming in for me right now, the paperback. But make sure to get you a copy of this. This thing is going to change your life in 10 ways before Tuesday. Trust me. Even if you get it on a Tuesday, it's still going to happen before Tuesday. That's how it, that thing will literally, it will, it will shift time. But all seriousness, I just want you guys to start living from a place of conscious awareness so you can actually be a conscious creator of your life as opposed to feeling as if you're helpless and that life is merely happening to you. That's what I'm here about. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Namaste and uh, namaskar.